I'd like to introduce you to my new fabric yardage tracking worksheet. So this is an Excel document that is available to download on my website. And it is a pretty big improvement on the one that I've shared with you in the past because it's got all of the formulas already ready to go for you. Um, so you don't have to do any, any calculations. It's just going to, you're gonna be able to plug in your information and it will automatically add it all up and spit you out your net yardage for the month. So I'm going to show you around because there's a little bit going on, more going on than the last one. So it is broken down by month. So there's a section for each month and there's about 14 rows um, in each month. But if you need more, it's, it's actually really easy to add more. I'll go ahead and show you that real quick before we get any further. So what you're gonna do is click any cell um, in this area. So I wanna add another row to January. And I'm just gonna go up here and say insert rows. And that's it. That shouldn't mess up the formulas for you. They should still work fine, um, but it gives you a little bit more room if you were really busy that month. So um, let's go through each column and we can talk about just the basics of what we need to put in each, in each area. So right off the bat, you're gonna have an area for dates. So some years I've put a specific date for, for when I've like finished a project and stuff like that. But other years I just leave it blank and I just know like, okay, it was in the month of January and that's enough information for me. But you're more than welcome to put a specific date in here when you're inputting something. Um, then there's a column for material. So here you can be specific about what fabric you used. So if you used, you know, a fabric from a certain collection or just a type of fabric, a lot of times I'll just put quilt and cotton, home deck, um, knits, voile, whatever I'm using, I'll just talk about it in that way rather than saying, you know, I used this specific print, but you're more than welcome to be as specific as you want in this section. That is up to you. Then for the project, I just put a little bit of a note about what it is. So if I've finished a project and I'm noting a decrease in my stash, I'll put, you know, indigo quilt, throw. Um, if it's a, a, like an accessory or a bag, a lot of times I'll say like, you know, like if I made a drawstring bag, I'll say drawstring bag, everything size. Um, so I try to be a little bit more specific here about what size I'm making of something, just so I have an idea when I look back um, what that was. And then uh, also in this section, if I'm bringing in fabric, if I'm giving away fabric, de-stashing fabric, I'll make a note of that here too. Um, now, now here's where we're going to Put our actual yardage amounts. So for yardage in, anytime I bring in fabric, so if I buy it, if I'm given it, um, I will mark it here, the, the amount. And then for yardage out, anytime I give away fabric, de-stash fabric, use up fabric in a project, I put it in this section. And the most important part about this column is you want to make sure that your numbers are negative. That will ensure that these formulas will work well for you. If you don't put it in negative, this isn't going to make any sense down here. So um, I will show you two ways to do that in a moment when we do a sample, a couple of sample inputs here. Um, the net, you really don't need to worry about it for this section because you're not necessarily going to put two, uh, an input and an output for one project. You can if you want, and it'll show you a net there, um, but it's not going to add it up here. It's going to add it up here. And then this is just a place to put in the cost. If you're looking to track your spending on, on fabric, then you can put that here, but that's totally optional. So I'm gonna go ahead and input a couple of sample projects just so that we can see all these things working and in action. So I'm going to say I used quilting cotton and I made a drawstring bag. I'm gonna say I made an everything size because that's pretty easy. Um, I didn't bring any yardage in for this project, but I did use up fabric and I used three quarters of a yard to make this bag. So there's two different ways to input it as a negative number in Excel. The first is just to use a minus uh, sign before you put in your amount. And you can see that turned it, that turned it negative. Um, and then the other way is to put it in parentheses. There we go, same thing. So it really doesn't matter which one you use, they both give you the same result. So whichever one uh, is easier for you. Um, so you can see right away, We've already got this negative three quarters of a yard populating down here. So if this was all we did the whole month, we didn't bring any fabric in, all we did was finish this bag. You can see we have our total yardage in for January was zero. Our total yardage out for January was three quarters of a yard. And our net of the two of these was negative three quarters of a yard. So in this month of January, we decreased our stash by three quarters of a yard and we spent no money. So that's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and do a couple more so that you can see, 
yeah, a little bit better how, how these, these things work in action. Um, so let's say I bought some home deck fabric. Um, I stashed it. I brought in three yards and I spent, oh boy, let's say I spent 60 bucks. All right, and we'll do another one just so that we can see a little better. Let's say quilting cotton again. I made a pillow and I used up a yard and a half of fabric. Um, let's do home deck again. I'm really stashing the home deck. No, let's say my friend gave it to me and she gave me two yards. Okay, so now we have a little more to get it, be getting on with here. So we've got, we brought in three yards, we stashed some home deck fabric, we were given two yards, and that adds up to five total yards coming in in the month of January. Then in terms of things that we finished, we have a drawstring bag for three quarters of a yard, a pillow for a yard and a half, and that adds up to negative two and a quarter yards. Now, when we add these two together, we get a positive two and three quarter yards. And we've spent 60 bucks. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. It's not super complicated. Like I said, the formulas aren't complicated. It's really just simple addition. But um, it's just nice. Then you don't have to do it every time. I'm excited not to have to do it manually every time. So, um, yeah, I hope that this will be helpful. It's, um, yeah, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. Um, if you forget what to put in each area, I've got a little simple kind of cheat sheet here for you. And then also a link to um, my fabric post about tracking. So if you want more information about how I personally, really there's a few different methods for how to calculate how much fabric you've used in a project. Sometimes it's super obvious. Sometimes it's like it calls for three fat quarters and you use just about every bit of those three fat quarters. And then you can kind of say, okay, I used, I used three quarters of a yard. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. So there's a few different methods, some more complicated, some more simplified um, for how to do that. Just a, an, a, a way to get started, but there's certainly no wrong way um, to do it. So find a way that works for you. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. If you have any questions about tracking, or if you have questions about the spreadsheet, uh, feel free to send me a message. There's a contact form on my website, which you can get to from here. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Happy tracking. I hope that this works well for you and your, your, um, your tracking adventure. And uh, yeah, happy sewing. One more quick note. I've also created a document specifically to work in Google Sheets. So it looks exactly the same as the one that works for Excel, but this way all of the formulas work completely within Google Sheets. So that way, if you don't have Microsoft Office or access to Excel, uh, you can still use it. Google Sheets is totally free um, with a Google account. And uh, yeah, it should work exactly the same. All the same formulas and all of that, you'll just use it online on Google Sheets rather than in Excel.